stuffed inside of this gorgeous chocolate mixture with the hazelnut set. I did nothing to create this! Yay! This means I'm a five-star island. Woohoo! Oh, a present. <laughs> I will get that. Uh, but yeah, this is my little island. This is Graham's house, because I love Graham. And my little pumpkin patches. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. But thought I'd share my small victory for today. Bizarre! Hello! Um, welcome to vlog number f um, six. <laughs> um, I um, if you don't know me, I'm Rosie. I'm an artist and maker behind Pin and Ink, and um, yeah, it is Tuesday today. Um, on the agenda for this week is I have the last six days of the Kickstarter, so pushing it on different platforms, I've been looking at different B pages like on Facebook and Reddit and stuff and sharing it there and there's been some really cool stuff on those pages as well so I'm glad I found them so I can learn more stuff about bees. I haven't painted too much but I did do some drawing um, so I did say I'd do this so can you see that? Is that too bright? Let's, let's lower the brightness a little bit. There you go. Um, so I made my Ghost of Forgotten Pumpkin sticker sheet and I used the actual, it's that one, <laughs> I used the, that's the legit gouache painting, I just went over the outline and uh, made the ghost colours match my normal ghosts that I have because the, um, there's a specific way that I do them like on the other sticker sheet that I've got that is just like general normal forgotten things like texting people. Um, but I really liked that I did the, all the colouring in gouache and all the acrylic gouache you know, managed to recreate the same effect on digital. You could look at that in a really negative way and go, wow, I spent ages painting that and I could do it in digital way quicker, but actually, no, I quite like painting in, in, I like painting in the traditional medium. It's really relaxing and really fun and it's just a different skill to work on. So anyway, um, that's the focus there. Really happy with that, it's really cute. They're online now if you're interested in my shop. Uh, there's not too many and I will say they will probably not arrive before Halloween if you're in America and it depends when you order it in the UK. But anyway, I mean, old pumpkins are way past Halloween. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then I've wanted to do another prompt for Cat Catniptober and I decided that I wanted to do the Magician's Cat one and I had this idea in my head this morning before I, before I started work to do like a dog trying to dress up as a cat because he wanted to be the witch's familiar but he's not a cat. And then I drew this and I really liked this and I'm sorry that's probably really hard to see but it was kind of like a, a cute beanie shaped pug with a paint pot and he looked really hopeful and happy. Um, so I used that to create my painting. I didn't plan on doing all of my catnip over in acrylic gouache, but I'm really enjoying creating this little series of paintings. So um, there you go. That's my little dude. Um, I just gave him white eyes. I don't know why. I just sometimes like it when they just have white eyes, like there's a light shining on them or something. And the paint's sort of tipping towards him, and he's very happy about it. And he's got little stars as though he's like sprinkled glitter on. That's why there's some like glitter down here. He's taped, he's taped a tail on, even though his curly tail is over here. And he's wearing some kind of party headband that, um, I don't know, he found somewhere. Um, that's why it's pink, because it's like some dress-up headband. Oh, and he's just like tip paint all over his head. 
but he can breathe it's fine <laughs> um but yeah uh, i thought it was really fun and cute and um happy with it so that's that's what i've been doing that's a lot of information sorry <laughs> so i will speak to you soon and yeah this angle is horrible why have i left this large space what is this I always make I always put the camera so low that I just end up with a double chin. Do you wanna go out? Should I take you out? You've made loads of paper mess again, haven't you? <laughs> Don't look at Doug. It's all you. I've sort of organised my pink unit, so I thought I'd show it to you. Yes, this is organised. I'm not a particularly minimalist person. Oh bits and pieces that I made for work. It's Dobby in a frame I also made for work. A tiny kitchen made up of bits and pieces people have given me. I've got a little Fimo model I made. Daisy May's head. It's a bit morbid but her body is very complex and I can't be bothered to make it. I did um, super glue all this string work on. It just got. I just started by making her face and it got more and more and more complex. Another Fimo creation of mine. This is Optimalo, who's also a pin, if anyone knows the reference. My catnip board. Charms that I made for a video for work. Some stock. My freebie stickers. Um, postcards or prints. Some more prints. Washi tape. That's my little shrine to the night circus. And I've also got my favourite Ghibli character there. Got my art supplies there. It's got my sketchbooks. Keep all my Inktober print um, pictures I've painted in there. Some more sort of backup stock. Hello, it is Thursday. My jelly gouache arrived. I ordered some um, two different. Oh, let's get them out. Two different boxes, this one and eat. Oh, the Hemi. Look at that colour. Hmm. Um and basically um I thought I what I originally planned on doing was I'd just film for this video, but I've ended up with quite a lot of footage and I think I'm gonna edit it into its own review. So you'll get to see what I painted on this tiny square. If you watch that review, which I don't know if it'll be out yet by the time this vlog's out or whether it'll be out after. I don't know. I've got a lot of editing to do and a lot of normal work to do. So we'll see. So because that's going to be in that video, I realise I haven't got anything to show you <laughs> in this one. So... My plan, where is it? Where's my plan stuff? One second, need to find the thing I was planning on doing. Ah, there it is. I am going to make a cork board. I'm gonna paint a cork board. So, if you remember, I said that if you gave me some suggestions in the comments, I would make a cork board in one of my vlogs. This piece here, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because it's really close to my face right now. Oh, that was closer. Okay, I'm further back now. Um, there were a few comments, some really nice ideas. So I have decided to turn it into a bee themed board for my bee pins because um, I've bought a couple from other artists. So I feel like if you really could have a bee one, which I could also put some flower pins on as well. So thank you to Manon for suggesting that. Thank you very much. Um, I always make boards, so feel free to make suggestions uh, for what boards I could make because um, I love making pin boards. Um, I will say uh, this in this video. I will say in this video I'm not going to show you how I make them from scratch. I have this piece of cork that I've already half started making. So um, just a quick explain it on how I did this. This top layer here is like four millimeter or yeah like four or five millimeter cork. You can buy it on a roll. Foam core. 
I've stuck that to the cork. I've done two pieces of five millimeter foam core, but you can buy 10 millimeter foam core. And the reason I say to make sure it's at least 10 mil is because when you stick a pin in it, you don't want it to go through the other side and into your wall. That would be bad, especially if you're like me and you're renting. So now it's at this form. I am going to draw a shape onto it and cut it out. Um, I'm not 100% sure what yet. I feel like a beehive could be nice. Or, I don't know. I like the idea of a beehive, but I'm not going to do a giant bee, because I'm sticking bees on bees. Bees on bees on bees. So options are, I do a hexagonal one, but it's a bit boring because you can buy hexagonal pin boards. Like, everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, so I, st I feel like a beehive, but either a beehive that's like man-made, or a beehive that's bee-made. There's <laughs> nothing. A bee-made. Um, so I'm going to do some sketching, I'm going to figure that out, and then I'm going to film me drawing it on, cutting it out, and doing the painting. I think I'm going to go for something like this. It's very simple, but it's good to be simple on pin boards, and I think it'll look nice hanging on the wall, because I can make it look like it's sort of hanging off a tree one day maybe, if I'm allowed to paint my walls in the future. Okay, so... Um, got your cork, I'm working on a cutting mat, I've got a lovely big uh, self-healing cutting mat, I've got some paint, this genuinely is just a bag of acrylics, some white, lots of yellows, um, and I've got my design, and I'm going to draw it on with a Posca pen. Let's get to drawing. Um, and then I'm going to put a door here. I really like the idea of there being like an entrance. So I'm going to use this line as like the edge of the doorway. And do that. And then I can colour it in as though there's a little door there. Pretty simple, but I think that's pretty effective. Now we're going to cut it out, so it's a pretty simple process, you can use a, this is a pretty cheap scalpel, this is really old, I hate these because you have to twist them to tighten them and they always get loose, um, and they're, to be honest, the best knives are the Swan Morton lockable ones, they're the best ones, similar to this but they're metal, they just never come with a lid, I just don't know why, anyway, Cutting it out, this takes its sweet time. You have to do, sorry, oh, <laughs> my head's in it. Um, it. Takes quite a bit of time, especially if you're using a thick cork and you don't want to screw up the edges. So the best thing to do is just do some cuts as you go. I find it easier to work in sections. So I'm probably gonna get to about a quarter here. And then I'm going to cut and I, I'm just going to say this for safety reasons if you're using a knife please be careful very sharp um, cut away from yourself if you can this is so much work I'm gonna have to speed through this by the power of editing There we go. Isn't that clever? <laughs> that actually took a really long time to do. I'm now going to paint it. So I'm going to use some strips of card. And I'm going to start. I'm going to go quite pale actually, I think, because well, I think I will. I don't know. I do like a golden yellow though. I feel like the pastel bees will stand out quite well out of a golden yellow. 
So I'm going to have a bit of orange, I think, in there. I'm obviously going to need a lot more paint than this, but I don't know exactly what I want yet. And I have a really rubbishy paintbrush, which will do for the covering of all the colours so far. Yeah, it's a nice colour. Cool. Now I'm just gonna get that on. Now I will say cork needs a good few layers. What's nice about this is that um, brown is in the brown is like um, a little bit yellowy, so it's not too bad. Whereas if you're going over it with like a white, oh, it takes so long. So yeah, I'm just getting the majority of the spaces filled with this crappy rubbish brush. smaller brush um, not orange darker yellow let's make some that's fine that's good this is kind of the joy about like crafty DIY stuff is when it's just for you it doesn't matter just get on with it you know? just do it Okay, um, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's subtle, which I quite like. In fact, there probably should be a darker line here, if I'm honest. So let's just sort that out. Yes, I'm a terrible paint waster when it comes to acrylic. I'm sorry. Let's just fix that last bit up. That's kind of just how I roll. She's ruined it already. Look at her ruining it. It's because I've got no water. I'm a terrible person. It's fine though, it's fine. I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to come back um, tomorrow 
and we're gonna finish off the edges I'm gonna sort the back out and um, it's gonna be done that's basically it but I will do a final finish off yeah okay we are back and it is lovely and dry as you can see it's uh, a lot of the holes have appeared again um, so even if you try and fill them all they will appear but I kind of like the texture of it it does actually look more natural so it's really nice you can see the um, chalk cork through a little bit but again as I said before um, we're very lucky I'm very lucky that cork is brownie so it works quite well for this but you may need to do another layer or so um, when you if you want to make sure that it hasn't got any cork showing through so I'm going to tell you how I make the edges look nice and also how I attach stuff to the back. So first off the edges. This is a black masking tape. It is called masking tape coated with rubber adhesive. I bought it from 4D model shop and I'll be honest you could probably use any tape that you want. So yeah I'm gonna put that around the edge and you're gonna see me do that. Sorry, there was a rolling pin there. That's nothing to do with this craft. The rolling pin and the chopsticks are from a video I was doing for work, um, making some like clay crafts for them. And I just <laughs> realized that they were there. So sorry about that. <laughs> it's just this really random rolling pin, but it doesn't look good, does it, that rolling pin? Right, so I've um, stuck the tape all around it. It's just to hide the ugly edges. And then what I'm doing is I'm just um, cutting little tabs into it so that you can fold it down nice and neatly and create a little edge. See? Uh, I'm going to keep doing that. done kind of reminds me of lumpy space princess right now so yeah that's the edge of it it's nice and neat finishes it off nicely and finally how I attach the bits on the back I've got my ribbon some pins and some super glue this is how I attach the backs this is a way that I've come up with it is totally random and it's not like the way to do it you can figure out your own way if you don't want yours on the wall you don't need to do this if you wanted to you could just make sure that the bottom of your design is flat so that it rests evenly because i have a lot of my boards which are not on the wall they just don't rest on surfaces very well or shelves so just make sure your designs in some way flat or you could even create like um a stick like a photo frame effectively or take the back of a photo frame and just stick it on and there's many ways you can uh, put this up, but I hang them on my wall because I have not got enough space to have stuff elsewhere. So I cut off a piece of ribbon. And what I want to do is fold it inward like that. Get my pin. Eh, come on, pin box. Let's go with a yellow for a B. And you're going to stab it through the ribbon, like so. Um, and then what you're going to end up with is, I'm just going to stab that out there. And then you want it to have a little bit of 
a little bit loose, otherwise it's not going to attach to the wall very well. Figure out where you need it to get to, so I'm going to say about there. Do the same thing again, let's just trim it a bit. Stab it through, and then work out where you want it to go, hopefully nice and neutral, like that. Now that's obviously not attached at all even, wow Rosie, <laughs> this is what happens when you're filming flat down, normally I'd be looking at it with my head over the top of it. Um, okay, let's make sure that's actually even, that's so good Rosie, well done. Is that even there? That's all right. Bit of room, that's good. Right, this obviously isn't actually stuck down though. That's just gonna come off. So what you do, is you get your super glue and be very, very, very careful please because super glue is the worst and you can literally get your fingers stuck together. That's fun. <laughs> uh, yes, be very careful with super glue. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and is especially so one thing I will say is super glue just seeps into the ribbon and it makes it really hard so um, what I do is first I put a bit on the hole so that it goes into the hole and then a bit on the actual part of the pin and then I push it in again on the dot on the edge of the pin, just being very careful of my thumb. Oh, 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 see, that was a lot of glue. And there you go. And then just very quickly make sure that they're straight. I even got a tiny bit on my finger there. So that's quite a tight fit actually, but it will go on. Um, so there's my little hook section. And there's the finished board. I've got this pin by Catnip and this pin by potato -y drawers. So they're gonna be the first bees to go on my beehive. And then the next bees to go on my bee, actually, probably not the next bees, I bet I'll buy some more, but um, eventually my Kickstarter pins will be on here and that'll be super cute. So let's put him here. And this one here. There we go. Um, let me know what you think of it in the comments and what board would you make? What would you have your theme be if you wanted to collect a theme of pins, if that's a question? <laughs> I put the hook up and I also stuck some corks to the back because it makes it nice and level with the wall. So there we go. You can see they kind of sit um, away from the wall at the same distance. Otherwise they kind of just kind of sit inwards like that and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm really picky. You don't have to do that. It's just me being really picky, but yeah, I think it's cute. I'm really happy with that. I think that's going to look really good with all of my bees on. I definitely want one in the door, like going in going, oh, hey, I'm just going off to work. <laughs> Yay. How does that work? It's not tied on. There's a problem like under the ground. Why do they need big long sticks then? Uh, they're laid in dead wood. Huh. Emerge from beneath the soil. Hi, um, it's me just rounding off this strange vlog slash how-to video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit strange, not a normal format for me and not going to be a normal format going forward. It was just kind of what happened. I made a how-to halfway through the video. So there you go. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And one last thing for me, my Kickstarter ends on Tuesday the 20th, yep, 20th 
of October at 6 o'clock GMT. So if you're interested in getting any of those pins, um, then have a look. If you're not, it's totally fine. Link's in the description and thank you very much. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it from me. I now need to get this edited. So that's what I'm going to do. And yeah, have a lovely day. And um, for those that got to this point, thank you very much for watching. And please comment below um, what board would you make if you were going to make a pin board. Alright, bye! I probably should be asking people to like and subscribe and do all that jazz. Hmm, need to get better at that. <laughs>